how can I help people is to be able to uh, further understand the teachings of Buddhism and Shambhala more myself. So I spend time, um, you know, throughout the year as much as I can, um, doing my meditation, doing my studying, and uh, so that's kind of a lifelong journey. I have sort of more a uh, role of being a teacher at times and uh, teaching Buddhism and Shambhala, and there's also sort of a leadership quality of trying to galvanize people and bring people together and uh, continue to support them. The Sak Young has been leader of the secular and spiritual elements of Shambhala since 1995. <laughs> Born in India, he studied with the best Buddhist teachers around the world. He now offers guidance to followers of Shambhala International. Columbus Shambhala Meditation Group. Dallas Shambhala Meditation Group. If you look at the red race or you look at business and you look at uh, everybody's trying to accumulate and so forth, what's the bottom line? It's, meant, it's a sense of being happy, a sense of fulfillment. So whether it's in the business realm, it's whether it's in the academic realm, or whether it's in um, personal realms, or whatever it may be, um, there's a quality of you're trying to strive for something. And fundamentally, what's at the basis of that is that it's the mind that is happy. So what we're really developing is our uh, strength and our peace of mind. And once we develop that strength, then we can take that anywhere. And uh, then at that point, uh, being out in the world is actually delightful. And uh, there's, a, there's a, a sort of a encouragement to welcome challenges. So that if we're in the midst of, uh, of uh, Toronto and the traffic's uh, whizzing by and it's uh, uh, a lot of uh, demand on us, that we could relax in the middle of that situation as much as we can relax here in the middle of this beautiful setting. There's some longing to immerse oneself completely in it, like to enter the whole world of it and not to worry so much about all the day-to-day -day kind of um, priorities and distractions that we have out there in the world. I think there's a quality of, um, you know, comparing ourselves to others and what's happening is, is that we live in a world where there's a lot of um, media <laughs> and lots of uh, kind of information coming in and people setting standards for what personal, um, uh, personal fulfillment is. It's part of the Sak Young's role to work with others in creating an enlightened society. The Sak Young recognizes this can be done in many ways, all of which are equally valid. I think that um, it's a matter of how, how one wants to relate to one's life. I think there's a quality of some people seem very, very um, determined and inspired to learn as much as they can about Buddhism, about meditation. So they, spend, they take time off from school or work and they spend months and years. And um, that's their, you know, desire. And uh, other people, I think, are, you could say, inspired uh, similarly, but they obviously have a commitment of family and business and work and school. And I think it's a personal decision of how they can balance it. And I feel like everybody can definitely practice meditation. I think simplicity allows us to go deeper, that otherwise we're always skating on the surface of life. But with simplicity, we can um, look more deeply uh, with what is it to be alive altogether, and also we can feel more deeply our connection to all human beings into this world. And so this is the challenge that we have is a notion of celebration. Celebration really ninety nine percent of the Shambhala community are living a lay life very successfully. Many of them are business business people, entrepreneurs, uh, and uh, professional people, university people. So somehow, it is possible to incorporate, let's say, the Buddhist values, the uh, Buddhist path into one's life. But one has to be constantly mindful, constantly remembering what, what, is, what really is important. Within Buddhism, we talk about that within sort of the world, we're always striving to get something. And it's important to be healthy as an individual. You know, get enough in terms of um, personal, you know, very basic things like food and clothing and 
things that so that we're healthy. Um, but when you then ultimately striving for material things, does that really lead to some kind of ultimate happiness? Of course it doesn't. And um, that's a perpetual thing, and everybody is caught in that loop. What we're really developing is our uh, strength and our peace of mind. And once we develop that strength, then we can take that anywhere. And uh, then at that point, uh, being out in the world is actually delightful. And uh, there's a, there's a uh, sort of a encouragement to welcome challenges. The Sak Young's focus on meditation makes Shambhala accessible to people of all beliefs, not just Buddhists. He says the ancient teachings on meditation and life are as relevant now as they ever were. The teachings aren't dealing with culture, but they're dealing with uh, the nature. And the culture changes, but the nature never does. Obviously, the world is getting smaller. Um, as we, you know, I end up traveling a lot and I see a lot of places, and every place is getting built up. People's psychological space is getting smaller because it used to be the world was unknown. Now everybody knows what's going on everywhere. So even when you get up, you sort of feel like you know what's going on in China and South America and wherever. I mean, it's all kind of uh, more intimate. And um, so that leaves a level of, could, to, could lead to a level of claustrophobia. And I feel that you, know, you can't go out anymore. People can't quite go to outer space yet you know, and get further. But people can realize that within their own mind, there's a tremendous amount of uh, openness. And I think that actually as time goes, as time begins to progress, the most important uh, you know, commodity as such, or some kind of a most important kind of resource, natural resource we're talking about, is the peace of mind. Here literally, think about every day. And to come back to the end of the day and say, what was the nature of that whole experience? So sometimes at the beginning of the year we just reflect was everything that happened to me real 